Asian Star Radio. 101.6 FM. So why, you may ask, is it a monumentous day today? Well, the first COVID vaccine from a GP surgery locally will be given today, which is quite exciting news, given the speed that all this has uh, gone out at. Joining me on the line this morning to talk about this and indeed other coronavirus uh, news as well, Dr Lalitha Ayer, who is a medical director at the East Berkshire CCG, as well as a local GP. Good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Mark. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming on. It must be a busy time for you. Yes, it is. I'm delighted to say that today is a major milestone in local history and Mm -hmm. kickstarts the rollout of our community COVID vaccination clinics for people over the age of 80 in Slough. Yeah. Vaccination at these clinics are going to be led by our teams of GPs, practice nurses and community pharmacists with patients receiving a direct invitation to attend. These new clinics follow the first delivery of the vaccine at the hospital sites to priority and at-risk groups. And there are plans for this vaccine to then cover wider areas and groups, including care homes, in the community in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, I mean, it has all, I must say, it's, it's all <laughs> unfolded at a, a massive pace, hasn't it? Like... Obviously, we know this vaccine that's being used, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, has to be stored at minus 70. Just to have got all the logistics of that, of getting it firstly into the hospitals and now out to the GPs in such a quick period of time. And as you say, today, an historical day, as we get the first jab going into a Slough resident today. I mean, it it is brilliant, isn't it? And the speed at which it's moved. It is. It is. It is really brilliant, but we are really confident that this vaccine is safe. Yes. The NHS will not offer any COVID-19 vaccinations to the public until experts have signed it off and said that it is safe to do so. Mm-hmm. So the MHRA, which is the official UK regulator, mm-hmm. has said that this vaccine is very safe and indeed highly effective. And we have full confidence in their expert judgment and processes. Um, and of course, Mark, as with any, any medicine, vaccines are highly regulated products. So there are checks at every stage in the development and manufacturing processes and continued monitoring once it has been authorised and is being used in the wider population. Yeah. Now, I mean, there are some people, obviously, who will say, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. It's not safe. I'm not having it. You, you know, you've just explained there for anybody that's thinking of not having it. Obviously, it wouldn't be out and about for use. And it's not just in the UK now. The UK were the first to authorise this. But obviously in America now as well, they've started a vaccine rollout programme as well with the same vaccine that we are using. People who are saying it's not safe, it's passed through. And I know it's gone quickly, but it's passed through an immense testing programme, hasn't it, to be able to get this far. And we here in the UK should be proud of the fact that we were the first to roll it out. Absolutely. We should be really proud that we have this facility available to keep our vulnerable people safe. And I understand that there's so much information out there, some of which may not be true and can be misleading. So I would urge people to gain their information from NHS channels or the gov.uk website. And if you have any questions, then please look at national guidance on the vaccine i can i can reassure you that all safety checks have been undertaken yeah i mean obviously it's had to move quickly but no corners have been cut it's just been done with an immense you know an immense speed but no corners have been cut and obviously the vaccine would not be being given out to people were it not safe and it's not just the uk now that have rolled it out there was you know, people from around the world looking on saying the UK may have been a bit quick here. The very same vaccine is now being used in a rollout in America as well. So that's now two major nations, medical teams who have certified this vaccine safe. And that's why it's being rolled out here in the UK and now in America as well. So it is entirely safe. And as you say, uh, also highly effective as well, starting with the over 80s uh there is i I do believe dr Ayer, there is a kind of a scale isn't there of when people will get vaccinated based on their vulnerability and obviously starting with the over 80s 
uh, then care homes, then it goes down to the over 70s, et cetera, et cetera, into people with vulnerable health conditions who are otherwise in a a safe age bracket, but people with vulnerable health conditions. Yes. So uh, the national organization called the JCVI has Mm -hmm. set out national guidance and we are all duty bound to follow that. The most important question is that people absolutely need not contact their GP or indeed any other NHS outlet to seek a vaccine. Practices will call them when it's their turn. All practices have worked really hard over the last months and few weeks to in fact ensure that the right patients are invited and they have been invited and eligible patients will be booked as we go along in a stepwise Mm. manner exactly as you said for the first dose of their COVID vaccine into the nominated clinic. What people can do is help by ensuring that when you're invited to have your vaccine by your local NHS team that they do attend the booked appointments. Well and I mean, not just talking about the coronavirus vaccine now, an awful lot of GP appointments are wasted, aren't they, every year by people who book them and don't turn up to them. Something like this just cannot be wasted because obviously there's a queue of people who are looking to get this vaccination and obviously there's only a finite number of people who can give it. There's absolutely no point at all in you being contacted by your practice and asked, can you please come in at this date and this time and just not turning up? Yes, absolutely. The local GP services and NHS, as you say, are open for uh, any issues that Mm -hmm. patients have, not just for the vaccine, but for any medical health issues. And you know that the NHS community urges people to come forward. The way we work is different because of coronavirus. We are talking to patients initially on the telephone and bringing patients in for a face-to-face consultation if medically required. So it's a triage system then? Absolutely. You're operating, so we yeah. have a triage system in place initially to bring people into the practice if required, but every patient will get the care they need as appropriate. As far as the vaccine is concerned, we will make the contact with patients, and mm-hmm. I say we as practices, in order to book them in. And clearly, when patients are being called, there's an opportunity to have a discussion at that point. Yeah. And If you have an appointment, please do ensure you attend. Clearly, if you're not well on the day or you have fever or you have coronavirus symptoms, then one needs to follow the guidelines and not attend that clinic. But do make contact and let us know you're not well. So the advice is if you are generally unwell or worried about anything, call your GP for a routine appointment. If you're looking for the vaccine, do nothing because your GP will call you when it is your turn, according to the nationally agreed rollout status. I mean, you know, residents of Slough and there are a number of elderly residents in Slough will be very pleased now that the vaccine is here in Slough and the local rollout has started to happen. It's great news. We've got uh, Christmas coming up. We've got people, obviously, uh, who are going to be finishing work soon. People will be finishing school soon. University students will be returning. What else would you like to say in terms of coronavirus and obviously this potential relaxation of the rules, the return of university students, the finishing of schools? Is there anything else you'd like to add to, obviously, the great news that the vaccine is now here in Slough and being given out? Yes, thank you for uh, asking. Um, whilst it's really exciting news that the new vaccine clinics will be providing another step closer on the path back to normal life, it's really important that we all continue to follow guidance to control this virus and save lives. Let's remind ourselves that this virus thrives in social contact. So we need to be really safe now and over the Christmas period and follow the guidelines of hands, face and space. Mm-hmm. It's vital to remember to wash our hands for at least 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer if that was not possible. Wear a face covering in public places, shops and indoor settings where you cannot socially distance. And remember to leave at least two meters space between yourself and others who don't belong to your household. I wanted to remind you... Can we just define household? Yeah, Yeah, thank you. So that's exactly where I was going, Mark. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I wanted to remind people that Slough is in Tier 3. And what that means is that we are not allowed to meet up with people indoors if they do not live or sleep with us in the same house, even if they are close relatives like your brothers and sisters. 
So that's so you, that's the four walls that you live in. If somebody lives in there with you on a regular daily basis, that's your household. Exactly. If somebody lives elsewhere, whether they are your brother, sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, yep. they are not your household. Exactly. So meeting them indoors is not advised if you are in Tier 3. Yeah. You may choose to meet them outdoors in a group of six, but let's remember that children also count within that number of six. Yeah. In fact, we've been working in collaboration with faith leaders, community champions and others. And I want to say I really urge and appreciate the cooperation of each and every one of you in Slough in keeping yourselves, your family and the community safe. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, there is the... There's a debate going on at the moment as to whether the restrictions relaxation that was announced for the 23rd to the 27th of December will go ahead. I don't want to drag you into an argument on that, but say it does go ahead and we want to go and visit people. Are there any steps that we should take now in advance before we go and uh, perhaps take advantage of those restriction uh, relaxations next week? Well, first of all, we need to ensure that we remember to follow the guidance of hands, face and yeah. face. The regulations are made by the government. Mm-hmm. If we are in Tier 3, we need to ensure that we follow them. It is then up to us whether we want to socialize, even though there is a relaxation of guidelines. There yeah. are many who choose not to do so because they live in multi-generational families yeah. with their vulnerable elderly and they have decided that they will not be doing this because there is a small risk of bringing the infection back home and Mm -hmm. passing it on to the vulnerable in the house. We have done a lot of work with the multi-generational families in Slough where we are giving guidance on how you can, if you are using shared spaces, how you can ensure their circulation of air by keeping windows open to reduce chances of infection. Mm -hmm. If you were sharing bathrooms or toilets together, how you can let the vulnerable person use it first rather than the others in the household. Um, uh, So all of this needs to be put in place. And it is each individual's personal circumstance that dictates that even if you are within the rules that are allowed, that you make a decision based on who lives with you. Remember that we love our families. And the elderly folk don't do as well as the youngsters with coronavirus. So let's all ensure that we protect our close loved ones. Yeah. Dr. Aya, thank you so much today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. A wealth of knowledge, I will say. Thank you very much. Uh, Just one final question. The jab goes out today in Slough. Will it actually be you that administers the first one? No, not oh. me personally, but it's my team. It's, yeah. We're all a team of GPs, yeah. pharmacists and nurses, so it is one of us and it's as good as me. Brilliant. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, I wish you a, a lovely day. Obviously, it is going to be busy. Please remember, uh, as we have just said, if you are somebody who expects to get the vaccine, you will be contacted by your GP surgery. Do not call your GP surgery reference the vaccine only call your GP surgery for normal routine business that is fair enough isn't it yes yes absolutely Mark you summarized it really well and I want to take this opportunity to wish all your listeners a safe Christmas and New Year um, and please do stay safe thank you very much Dr. Aya same to you thank you bye thank you have a lovely day bye bye There you go. Good news, eh? The first COVID-19 vaccine will go out today in Slough into a patient. So that is good news. And as Dr. Iyer just said there, please do remember, whilst the COVID vaccine is now available for distribution in Slough, there is a strict order in which it will be distributed among society, starting with what is deemed to be the most vulnerable and working the way down in terms of vulnerability levels, you will be contacted by your GP. They have the medical records that rep- that uh, are belong to you. They will know your needs in terms of that vulnerability. So please, please do not 
even though the vaccine is now in Slough, do not call your GP and ask for an appointment for the vaccine. Your GP will call you. Uh, if you want to call the GP about any other medical reason whatsoever, you are more than welcome to. But in terms of the vaccine, there is this strict order in which we have been told, uh, and certainly the medical profession have to follow in terms of the order in which it will be given out. And your GP or your local NHS trust will make contact with you to arrange your appointment when it is your turn. This will obviously be up later on as a podcast as well. If you've missed any of it, you can listen again later on via our social media feeds at Asian Star Radio. The latest news, information, weather and traffic and travel on the Asian Star 101.6 FM Breakfast Show.